limestone reactivity test is a protocol to test how reactive a liming material is for use in horticultural substrates. We add lime into growing media for several reasons. The most obvious one is to neutralize the acidity of media components such as peat and bark. Unreacted residual lime also provides buffering to pH change over time. And limestones supply nutrients such as calcium, magnesium, and sometimes micronutrients such as iron and manganese. Different limestone sources are useful for different purposes, and that's where reactivity comes in. A highly reactive lime is most useful for adjusting initial pH, and a less reactive lime may be useful for providing longer term pH buffering. There are several limestone types. Limestones that are high in calcium are termed calcitic limestones. Limestones that also contain a significant amount of magnesium are termed dolomitic limestones. Some highly reactive types of lime include oxides and hydroxides. Hydrated lime is a common name for calcium and magnesium hydroxide. Several factors affect the reactivity of a limestone. One we just mentioned was the limestone type. Chemical composition is important where calcite is more reactive than dolomite. Increasing iron concentration in the lime will decrease reactivity. The neutralizing capacity per kilogram of lime will vary. Finer limes are more reactive than coarse limes. And the crystalline structure of limestones also vary. Standard procedure for evaluating lime reactivity and lime rates is a wet out test. In these tests, limestone is mixed in with the growing medium and pH is measured over time. In the protocol we're talking about here, we're trying to predict how reactive a limestone will be. And we take into account the limestone type, chemical composition, neutralizing value, and particle size. We go through a series of steps to calculate some reactivity indices, starting with what proportion of the limestone falls within each particle size fraction. How much is fine, moderate, or coarse? We have efficiency values for each of those particle size fractions. Fine limes have an efficiency close to one. Coarse limes have a lower number. We calculate an overall fineness factor for the entire limestone, taking into account its particle size distribution. We measure the acid neutralizing value, and from these we can calculate the effective calcium carbonate equivalents of a particular lime source. This chart shows results from a survey of nearly 30 different limestones that are being used in container media in North America and Europe. As we go from left to right, we have increasingly fine and reactive limestones. So for example, on the left hand side, we have a limestone where most of the particles are greater than 85.85 millimeters, which means that they would be retained on a 20 mesh screen. On the right hand side, there are very fine limes that would even pass through 325 mesh screen, or in other words, have a diameter less than 0.045 millimeters. We took these different limestone sources, divided them up into different particle size fractions by sieving them, and then we wanted to see how much variability there was within a particular particle size fraction in terms of the pH response. The top right graph shows 60 to 100 mesh screen with several different dolomitic sources. After about 42 days, the equilibrium pH was reached. 
and the pH varied by about 0.5 units between the most reactive and least reactive of those lines. There was even greater consistency when we had a 200 to 325 mesh screen in the bottom right graph, where the variation between the most reactive and least reactive dolomite was by plus or minus about 0.15 units from the mean. We compared the pH response for calcitic limestones and dolomitic limestones to the pH response when we combined reagent calcium carbonate into peat. Those lime particle size efficiency factors are shown here in this table. As we move down in the table, we go from very coarse down to very fine limestones. We have values for calcitic limestones and for dolomite. You can see that calcite is slightly more reactive than dolomite, and that as we come down to the finest fraction, we have almost the same reactivity as we would see from reagent grade calcium carbonate. So you can interpret particle size efficiency, it's a very simple concept, by saying, for example, if we have calcite in the 200 to 325 mesh size range, the effectiveness would be 98% of what we would see from the same amount of cal reagent calcium carbonate. And that size fraction would be twice as effective at raising pH compared with coarse 200, sorry, 20 to 60 mesh limestone. The particle size efficiency will change over time. Our standard time to make this analysis is after seven days, incorporating the limestone into peat, keeping it warm and moist. However, if we continue out over time, you can see that the coarser fractions, the ESC starts to approach one, except for the very, very coarse limestones where not all of that lime will probably ever react during the time frame that we have uh, plants growing through a typical greenhouse crop cycle. The overall objectives of this protocol are to calculate how reactive a liming material will be so that we can help define where that limestone can best be used. And also to predict how much of that lime will need to be incorporated into a container substrate to achieve a target pH. Parameters to be measured include moisture content, acid neutralizing value, chemical composition, particle size distribution, and also the fineness factors. To measure moisture content, we use an AOAC method where we oven dry the limestone and calculate the percentage of moist moisture based on the initial and the final dried weight. The acid neutralizing value, we also use the standard AOAC method. We have certain reagents that need to be prepared or purchased. We acid react the limestone. And then we back titrate with sodium hydroxide to calculate the acidity of that limestone source compared with pure calcium carbonate. Chemical composition is adapted from an AOAC method where we acid digest the limestone and then with that solution we can analyze calcium magnesium levels using an ICP. Particle size fraction involves sieving our lime into different particle size fractions. We weigh out a sample, place it into a series of stacked sieves. We have a standard mesh sizes for each of those sieves.
we place the sieves on a shaker and then measure how much of the limestone is retained or passes through each of the sieve sizes. The fineness factor refers to the overall particle size efficiency of all of the different size fractions in a, in a lime sample. Calculated for time t, our extended time is 7 days, is the sum of the particle fractions and the particle size um, efficiency for each of those 6 particle sizes that we're working with. So here's an example where we have a certain distribution that we've measured with our sieves, we're multiplying it by our particle size efficiency factors, we add up all of those numbers, and we, in this case, come up with a particle size fineness factor of 0 0.96. The effect of calcium carbonate equivalents is calculated by multiplying the fineness factor by the acid neutralizing value. So for example, if we have values of 0.96 and 0.98, then together we'd get an overall effective calcium carbonate equivalence of 0.94. That means that on a per weight basis, if we applied the same amount of this limestone compared with calcium carbonate, we'd get 0.94 of the pH response in P. There is a spreadsheet to help you make the calculations. You enter information into different gray boxes. And there's also some explanatory notes that help you interpret what some of the information um, is used for and also how that information compares with other commercial limestones. So you enter in the particle size distribution on a percentage basis. There's information there about how coarse each of those fractions represents. Also enter in the acid neutralizing value, calcium magnesium, and lime type. The moisture level is also entered in the spreadsheet. And again, we help to interpret the information that you provide. We'd like to thank the students and staff at the University of Florida, our colleague Bill Argo at Blackmore Company, Dr. Paul Nelson and his team at North Carolina State University, and funding was provided by American Floral Endowment and our partners in the Young Plant Research Center. The Young Plant Research Center is a combination of universities and leading companies that work together on research. It includes leading media and fertilizer companies, and also leading growers, especially those that focus on production of young plants.